If you need ideas for indoor and outdoor fall decorating this year, then stay tuned. Today's video is sponsored by Bright Town. Bright Town Company is dedicated to bringing families and friends closer together with making just the perfect ambiance for your occasion or your home decorating. We're starting with the indoor DIYs and the first thing that I'm going to make is a garland. And for this, you will need some book pages, some leaves, some jute twine, something that you can use to trace around to make a leaf pattern. You'll need some raffia, or in this case, I'm using a Dollar Tree hula skirt, and some fairy lights. And I'm using Bright Town's Firecracker Fairy Lights, and I chose these because there are so many pretty lights coming off from the main wire of this strand. The first step in this project is to make your book page leaves. And so I'm using this wooden leaf from the Dollar Tree to trace around. I have multiple book pages that is underneath of this leaf, and I'm going to try to cut them all out at once. I was able to cut 10 pages at once with just my regular crafting scissors. How many you need will depend on how long and how full you wanna make your garland. I just made a ton of them to be on the safe side. Next, you need to work on your leaves and you need them to all be separated and individual. So cut them apart if they're still on their stems. Now you begin layering your book pages on top of your fake leaves. And I have two main colors of leaves that I'm using, orange ones and red ones. And I decided that on the orange ones, the book page will go on top of the leaf. And on the red ones, the book page will go underneath the leaf. I think this gives character and good variety to the garland. Next, you need to cut the length of jute twine that you'll need for your garland. And the way that I determined that was by the length of my firecracker lights, which was nine feet. So I just cut my jute string to the length of the lights, adding a couple extra inches so that I can have loops on the ends if I want to hang it. Then begin attaching your leaves to your jute string. I alternated my red leaves and my orange leaves and I attached them with a stapler. I promise you won't even notice the staples once you get this all put together and with the pretty lights shining. So far your garland should look like this and it's already shaping up pretty cute. To make it more full, I'm going to add some strands of this hula skirt, or you can use raffia, but I really believe that the hula skirt strands are stronger than regular raffia, making it easier to tie. So I just tied some strands of that in between each leaf. Then finally, add the lights, and I wanted to mention that these Bright Town lights that I'm using are using a plug, not battery operated, so I don't have to worry about replacing batteries when they die or leaving them on too long, so I can plug and unplug them whenever I need them. To secure the garland to the lights, I just use the jute string that I left on each end to tie around each end of the lights, and in between, I just kind of wrapped the lights around the garland as I went along. And then it's finished. And this is my favorite garland that I've ever made. I'll be using this year after year. These firecracker lights will be linked in my description box below, along with all the other Bright Town lights that I'll be using in this video. Some of the products that I'm using will have discount codes, so make sure that you look in the description box and use those discount codes to get a nice percentage off your order. Because I made a ton of those book page leaves more than I actually needed, I wanted to do something with them to go along with my garland for my display. So I'm taking the book that I actually got the book pages out of because I love the color of it and I'm going to arrange a group of three of the leaves on top of the book and I'm going to hot glue them down. Then I wrapped jute string around the bottom portion of the book several times and tied it into place. 
I felt like it still needed something, so I'm going to add one of these faux leather pumpkins that are so cute, and you get them at the Dollar Tree. I'm actually not going to use the clip that comes on the pumpkin, so they're easily pulled off, and I hot glued that pumpkin to the leaves. For some reason, I didn't know where to stop with this book, and I felt it still needed something, and I wanted to spell out fall, but my Scrabble letters were missing the F. A L L. <laughs> so I'm just using the letters that I did have. I'm going to turn them over. I'm going to use a black Sharpie marker to write the letters that I do need to spell out fall. And then I hot glued them to the bottom corner of the book. And these Scrabble letters did come from Dollar Tree. Since I already had the leaves made, this was so simple, quick, and easy. And I love how it turned out. For the next indoor DIY, I'm using the nine pack of Bright Town's LED flameless candles. Something that I really like about these LED candles is that they actually have wax on the outside of them. So that helps in making them look so realistic. They are battery powered and they come with a remote control with timers and different functions. I like that they came in different staggering heights so you can use them all together in a group just like this and they're beautiful as is or you can separate them into smaller groups and use them individually. Since this was such a large set of candles, I'm gonna break them up into groups and show you three different ways that you can decorate them if you want to spice them up a little for fall. The first way I'll show you is using some scrapbook paper that comes from Hobby Lobby. It's beautiful with these birch trees and will work for fall or Christmas, I think. I just cut the scrapbook paper down to size to use like a wrap around the candle. I used Dollar Tree clear craft glue to glue the scrapbook paper to the candle. I wrapped it up and glued down the end. You'll need to keep pressing that scrapbook paper down onto the candle until it is fully secured. I made a set of three of them and now I'm going to tie them together with some twine to make a pretty grouping. My second idea is to use the wood cutouts that you can get at the Dollar Tree in the shape of leaves and using some twine, just tie those around the candles and that's it. And the last idea is to decoupage some fall napkins onto the candle. These napkins came from the Dollar Tree. If you're new to decoupaging with napkins, the first thing you need to know is that napkins come in two to three layers. So you need to peel back the excess layers, leaving only the top printed layer. Then cut the napkin down to size to use like a wrap. Then work in sections, putting down a little bit of Mod Podge and putting the napkin on top, smoothing out the bubbles until the whole candle is wrapped up. Out of all those candles that I decorated, I chose to use the ones with the wooden leaves for my vignette. Now moving on to the outdoor fall DIYs, and I decided I wanted to decorate up my shed. I use this shed for my decoration storage, my craft supply storage, and it's just full to the brim, so at least I want the outside to be cute. Like I said, this shed is full, so you can see through the cute little windows the stacks of totes and Halloween decorations and things that don't look very pretty from the outside. To remedy that situation, I picked up a vinyl tablecloth from the Family Dollar Store. I'm going to cut it to the size of the windows and I'm using my heavy duty staple gun to staple it to the inside of the window so now you can no longer see the mess that's really inside. 
I'm going to light up my shed with a string of solar lights from Bright Town. I like these because they are shatterproof. It's really windy where I live at times, and so I don't have to worry about them breaking. And they have a really large solar panel to soak up enough sun to make them really bright. I actually only wound up needing one string of lights that was plenty to go across the top of my shed and down the sides. I was so happy to get these string lights hung up. They were not hard to attach to my shed and I can't wait for night to see them light up. Now I'm going to make some large wreaths to hang on the doors of my shed. So I picked up these hula hoops from the Family Dollar store. They are the smallest hula hoops that they had, and I think they were on clearance, half off even. So I picked up two of them. You'll also need some mesh ribbon, which they also sell at Dollar Tree, and you'll need some garland. The first step is to remove the shiny sticker decoration from the hula hoops, and you can use a knife or scissors to get it started on one edge, and then once you get it started, it's pretty easy to just peel it off. Now I'm attaching my garland to the hula hoop using floral wire, and to make my wreath look fuller, I doubled up on my garland, so I'm actually using two garlands for one hula hoop, but they are each folded in half. Now this is the first time I've ever used this decorator mesh before ever in my life and I don't usually make wreaths so if you have a better way to do this by all means do it the way you know how or is best but uh, I just chose to use the easiest method I could think of which was just to cut off some pieces and tie it right onto the hula hoop. I alternated my colors of yellow, orange, and brown and other than I cut my pieces a little shorter on the first hula hoop, I learned from that mistake and made them longer on the second hula hoop. I think it turned out pretty cute. And I just tied some jute string to each of the hula hoops to use for hanging. Next up, I wanted there to be some cute chairs sitting outside of my shed. I already had these metal ones, but I didn't think that the blue was very fall, so I decided to spray paint them white. I added some mums and a few little decorations that I already had on hand. I got that metal plant stand from an antique store, and I think it's perfect for this vignette. And if this were a covered porch area, I would love to have a fall blanket and a cute fall pillow sitting in one of these chairs. I picked up this pretty fall doormat at the Family Dollar store, and I'm going to show you a tip. It's so much cuter if you layer your doormats. So I picked up this scatter rug that was also from Family Dollar, and I put the fall doormat on top and look what a difference that makes. It just makes it so much cuter and makes the fall doormat pop. On the opposite side of the chairs, I put together a grouping of some things that I actually took out of that shed, which is a wooden ladder and I just decorated it up with stuff I had. Here's another tip. If you have something with words like the autumn skies and pumpkin pies, put a clear coat spray paint or something clear coat over it to weatherize it so it doesn't just come off in the rain. And lastly, I'm going to add more lights to this scene using solar pathway lights from Bright Town. These come in an eight pack and you can get brown or silver. I chose the silver. They were easily planted into the ground and they make such a pretty pattern in the night. 
So here's a daytime look at how my shed turned out. I'm so happy to have some festive fall decor. Since I don't have a porch on my house, I felt like I, I have something to decorate. And here it is all lit up at night. So thank you to Bright Town for sponsoring today's video. If you want to get any of these lights for yourself, be sure to check out my description box down below and use the coupon codes to save you some money. Thanks for joining me today. And if you want to see more DIY fun, click the link that I provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye.